lots of people think that those who want to be poly just want to do it because they're horny or just want lots of sex or that's one big orgy that one really makes me giggle. So, <laughs> and while that's an option and you know everyone can have an orgy <laughs> um that's not what being poly this is about i mean mostly we're doing we're splitting house chores together you know what i mean <laughs> so <laughs> In relationships, is three a crowd or is it the magic number? This episode we're talking about polyamory. You might think you know what that is, but do you really? Let's find out. Love matters. Love matters. Love matters. Love I'm Evelyn Sharma, and this is Love Matters, a podcast about relationship topics that matter to you and me. So I've been married to a great guy for over a year now, and we just recently had our beautiful baby daughter. But of course, that doesn't mean I've got all the answers when it comes to love, or that I'm an expert on what makes relationships work. And man, is there a lot to learn. That's why I started this podcast with DW and Indian Express to explore matters of the heart together with fabulous guests, experts, and friends. Now, I have to admit, I hadn't even heard of the word polyamory until I came across the Netflix show, How to Build a Sex Room. Wow, seven people in a relationship? I can barely deal with the demands of one more person. How do you make it work with more than two people in a relationship? I totally needed to know more, so my team and I thought that would make a great episode for Love Matters. So today I have two amazing guests on the show who are in a throuple, which is three people in a couple. A throuple. Shweta Sanktani and Tanisha Arke, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having us, Evelyn. Yeah, we're really excited to be here. I have so many questions and I'm super excited to have you as my guest today to find out how you navigate a relationship that doesn't fit neatly into society's expectations. But first, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Well, I've been a lawyer at the Bombay High Court for about 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I met Ashish and Tanisha, well, I met Tanisha about four years ago. And about two years ago, we started a company called Sandhya Project, mm -hmm. which started with uh, sex education. And now we sell pleasure products in India. And we're the only manufacturers of pleasure products in India, actually. So here we are. Amazing. Fantastic. Tanisha, you used to be a wildlife conservationist. Is that right? Yes, yes, I was. And how did you get to the new project? Well, I was pretty much working in remote locations as a queer person, primarily surrounded by people who were either straight or queer, but still in the closet. And I was almost always the only person who was very out and proud in these spaces. I wound up thinking a lot about how my identity affected my mental health in ways that it didn't necessarily affect um, the people around me. So sexual health and mental health just became something that was on my mind almost constantly because I had to think of it in so many different ways compared to the people who I was working with or the communities that I was living with. And I think that's how it just eventually became a very natural career progression for me as well, because it was something I was always thinking about. That's very cool. Yeah, you're working on this project together with your romantic partner, Ashish Merotra as well. Um, so the three are not just in a throuple, but you're also business partners together. Yes, it's a lot. Imagine, <laughs> I can imagine. Well, very cool, and um, I feel like this is a whole episode of itself if we dive deeper into the Sangya project. But guys, make sure to check it out. It's sangyaproject.com. You'll find it there. But hey, before we delve any deeper, let's get a few facts straight about polyamory for B and also for our listeners who might be new to the idea. And guys please get in touch with us on lovematters at dw.com if you have any questions or if you'd like to share your own story of polyamory. We'd love to hear from you. La, la, la. Love matters. Polyamory comes from the Greek word poly, meaning several, and amor, the Latin word for love. 
but it's very different from polygamy, where a person has multiple partners, but those partners are in an exclusive relationship with that one person. How does it work for you, Tanisha and Shweta? And Ashish, who is not here, so you'll have to answer for him because <laughs> he's part of your throuple. I think one of the main reasons why I wanted to switch to polyamory was because it was my way of telling my partners that, hey, if I do actually have feelings of, you know, romantic affection or sexual attraction towards someone else, I will come and tell you exactly that because we've agreed upon having these conversations explicitly and candidly. I'm not going to do these things behind your back mm -hmm. or evade these conversations entirely and there will be no secrecy involved because we've already discussed that there's a very natural possibility that we may have these connections with other people. So is there a difference between polyamory and being in an open relationship? I would say yes, because um, an open relationship is a little less defined in the sense that in an open relationship, you can also just have sexual connections with other people and it doesn't necessarily have to venture into an emotional territory. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. With polyamory, it's more of an assumption that an emotional connection with other people is going to happen. Things are likely to get romantic to some degree or the other with other partners as well. You are likely to sit down at some point and have a conversation about multiple partners um, and how you have different ideas of commitment or different ideas of um, enmeshment with each partner. And I think polyamory just creates more space for those conversations because it makes that assumption from the get-go that you are not only going to be having sex with other people, you are likely to have very deep emotional connections as well. Okay, I get it. So, um, Tanisha, when you kind of joined the relationship, did you feel like you just had a menage a trois? Um, well, threesomes are more of a, an event uh, around <laughs> sex, really. So it's more short-lived, and I think that's how I would uh, classify a threesome. Yeah. But with a throuple, it's three people having um, relationships with each other within their own right. Um, in my case, I had started uh, dating Ashish first, yes, and Shweta became my friend in the first couple of months when, um, while I was seeing Ashish. And like we mentioned, uh, there was a very natural progression in our relationship. So being a throuple to us means that the three of us do take certain decisions together. We're very involved in each other's lives and in have a very strong sense of commitment to each other. But we also respect the fact that there are three relationships here that need their own space, their own time, their own rituals, their own little inside jokes. All of that needs to be respected as well for that sense of balance and stability to sort of continue. So how do you navigate all these uh, challenges? How do you deal with three individual relationships that are also in one big relationship? Do you make certain times for the individual relationships? Are there different rules for other relationships? And yeah, how does it all work? <laughs> well, like you said, it, it's actually a lot of communication. Yeah. Even when the relationships began, even when we decided to go poly, it was, you start with a set of rules, you try and see if those boundaries work. And uh, those you have to be open to the fact that those will change as per your needs as well. So why you start off by saying that this is okay and this is not okay, those are also ever evolving. And of course, as you grow, as um, you date other people, as you, once we began um, dating each other and it turned into a trouble, there were some rules and regulations and boundaries there as well. And uh, Can you give me some examples? But for example, we we openly decide that, you know, we will go out on dates. There will be certain times for, uh, there are times when the three of us go out, but then there are also times when it's just the time for two of us out of three, you know, and those are, those we, those have to be talked about because you're, you're dealing with three people's schedules, right? So that's just a small example. That's just in terms of time, in terms of conflict resolution as well. You know, there's there's a lot of talking that is involved because, you know, you do anytime you come close to having a fight, you don't want it to feel like two people are ganging up on one person. Right. So there's a way in which it needs to be navigated. Yeah, right. Right. It's not just communication. It has to be softer in every sense of the word. So think of how much communication you need to 
have in any relationship and this is just a little more because you know you have another variable added into all of that and that also includes the the personal and past experiences that each of us come up with yeah so you have to take that into account as well right jesus that's a lot it's a lot yeah and i've seen people dismissing polyamory very often to say that oh you know they you're probably not uh, serious about someone and you have commitment issues it's actually quite the opposite Absolutely. But hey, like so many of us, I grew up with the Bollywood or rom-com idea of finding my one true love and living happily ever after, basically follow the conventional route of monogamy, marriage and kids. What made you think that you could be in a relationship with more than one person? What was that specific aha moment? I started thinking about it when I was actually in a long distance relationship. The relationship was going really well but i think there were these long periods of loneliness and just us not being able to communicate with each other because there was so much else going on in our lives while also being a couple of time zones apart and i remember talking to a couple of friends at the time and telling them quite explicitly that you know i could see myself building connections with people um in the same city as me and it potentially becoming romantic or even sexual or anything deeper than just you know friends hanging out on a you know a weekend and still having love left for my then partner and i think the second i said that out loud it really stayed with me and i couldn't stop thinking about it and i just kept talking about it with a couple more people and i realized that for me it wasn't about just filling in the void because my partner was busy or because we were temporarily going through a long distance thing i realized that i always felt that way i always felt this capacity to explore connections with other people and have healthy connections with other people while still building on the love i already have for existing partners so i was very curious about polyamory when i found out that there was a word for it because for the longest time i just thought that this was me being very radical and, and revolutionary in my ideas of love Uh, only to find out that people have been doing this for aeons um and i just wanted to give it a shot and see how it goes and very very luckily the first two polyamorous people that i met were ashish and shweta and we just hit it off instantly wow well look at you lucky you found your two <laughs> true loves <laughs> yes yes i i really lucked out and how Aww. she gate crash that's how <laughs> Okay, tell us uh, how she gate crashed. How did this all happen? And of course, how did you find polyamory for yourself? Yes, I will get to how we met Tani, but uh, before that, Ashish and I, we've been married since 2015. And okay. uh, it was actually soon after we got married that uh, we realized that poly is how we wanted to go about it but it wasn't because anything was lacking in the relationship. Actually, I think the thought started before that. because both of us were pretty clear on the fact that we wanted to spend our lives with each other and having arrived at that conclusion the rest didn't really matter and by that i mean in terms of security mm-hmm. in the sense that we already knew that we were going to spend our lives with each other we already knew that we were giving each other the safety and the security and the comfort that two people long for in a relationship and so we also realized that if either of us had feelings or relationships with other people it was not a reflection on how we felt for each other mm. so the whole idea was that if it happens it happens and uh, for a while neither of us dated anyone after we decided to go poly and then yeah of course you know um, eventually a few months down the line he dated someone i dated someone and you know the way we explored poly and our relationship with that evolved as well in time and well a couple of years down the line we one day decided to have this massive party at our house and mm-hmm. we called a bunch of people mm-hmm. was it a poly party or was it just a party no 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 <laughs> it was just just a, just a party okay. just a party just you know we used to have these rages so to speak <laughs> where we would start it, these were supposed to be afternoon barbecues which were supposed to end by late evening but never got over till early next morning yeah. because people would just come and go hang out drink chill okay. and we had this one acquaintance who we called and tani gate crashed the party with that acquaintance and my first <laughs> thought was oh my god this woman is so stupidly pretty Aww. 
and then I think soon after that, Tani and Ashi started talking and um, they started dating first. I mean, Tani and I really met and talked way down the road. I mean, like six, eight months after that. Oh, wow. Okay. That's not true. We were talking from the start, but um, I started dating Ashish first and I was in contact with Shweta from the beginning. But, well, yeah, we also never dated. We kind of just woke up one day and said, oh, so this is this is happening. <laughs> if you ask us when this happened, there's, I don't think either of us could give a clear answer. I think Ashish and Tani have an anniversary. With Tani and me, neither of us, I think, could give you an answer of when this happened because we just weren't touch then we started talking then we started hanging out then we started living together so I don't know when it actually happened sweet well it sounds like just a regular Bombay afternoon to me but (laughs) maybe not to most people (laughs) yeah maybe not to most people so maybe Tanisha was there ever a time where you felt left out because you knew that Shweta and Ashish are also married and you're new to the relationship Was there ever a time where you felt maybe jealous or, you know, that you may not be as much apart as the other two? Um, I would say no to the jealousy, but yes to the um, feeling like you're not a part of it. And that's only because of how um, people on the outside have sort of viewed us or discussed our relationship. Um, there have been a lot of instances where, say, people assume that I'm not as um, involved in the decision making or involved in the time we spend together, simply because they have the sense of hierarchy that the marriage, the legal marriage, comes before the you know the marriage we committed to each other. Um, so that assumption is something that a lot of other people have made before, and it does make me feel like they don't understand that this is three people making choices together. And that has been very frustrating, mm. um, especially because, you know, you don't know what's really going on in our home. You don't know the kind of effort we're putting into each other, or how how much we commit to the rituals we have together. And I'm not going to sit down and explain that to every single person I meet. So sometimes I do encounter people who think that, you know, there's a hierarchy in the relationships we share with each other. And that's, I think, going to be a constant um, assumption that a lot of people make about us. Right. So Shweta, how did you, because you said you first were Tanisha's friend and then the two of you um, sort of started to develop romantic feelings towards each other. How did you make her understand that she is as much a part of Ashish's life as you are and also of yours? Actually, that's something that Tani would be able to answer better. How did I do that, Tani? <laughs> I mean, I just know that I didn't, uh, there was never any, there was, for me, it didn't feel like you are the outsider because it was just very easy with her from the very beginning. It was, um, it was, I didn't have to do much in the sense that it felt very natural and organic. Like we met and we hit it off and every time she would come over, I didn't want her to leave. Every time we go out, I wanted her to come along. Every time um, we did something that I knew she would enjoy and it was in her absence, I would think of her. So, you know, it was, it was, I didn't have to try too hard. It was just something that just happened. So how did it feel for you when you started dating Ashish, knowing that he's still got a relationship with someone else as well? Uh, well, actually, it was a lot of fun because it felt safe from the get-go. And I knew for a fact that um, he had had a conversation with Shweta about me when we started going out. So that automatically put me at ease as well because I knew that, you know, if I was out in public and I happened to run into them, there wouldn't be any awkwardness. There wouldn't be any secrecy. I wouldn't have to pretend to be just someone on the internet who knew one of them or both of them. Um, knowing that everything was on the table and everyone knew exactly what was going on immediately put me at ease. So I knew that um, this was something I really wanted to use as my sort of barometer to figure out whether polyamory was truly working out for me or not. Um, Because this felt like the luckiest and safest outcome I could have had in this space, right? Of all the strange um, relationships I could have had in my first attempt at polyamory, mm-hmm. I met the two most wholesome people I know Aww. who were happy to sit down and have every difficult conversation with me. So, you know, that's when I told myself, Ki, hey, if this doesn't work out, then you know for a fact that maybe polyamory is not working for you. And I think that feeling <laughs> lasted all of maybe 
two days in the first few months of me uh, seeing Ashish and very quickly it just went away and I knew in my gut that this was all going to pan out. That's awesome. So do you guys still date other people as well or are you open to involving a fourth person or like uh, are you guys like now just in a very committed throuple or are you still living your poly life of you know being open to more people joining yeah we do date other people of course the frequency of that has gone down but that is also because work has taken up so much of our space and time i mean we hardly take weekends off because uh, the company fairly new yeah we just didn't want to be in a mold because it didn't feel necessary you know um it's sort of why deny yourself something when there is no reason for denying it right so everything that happens afterwards is just really a consequence of it so where a, where a fourth person is concerned i don't know if it's going to happen organically um, because of course you know the more people you add into a equation the more stability it requires and then you're dealing with a lot more variables right like i said earlier so i don't know if it will happen or not um, i don't know i don't think we care if it does so you know if it, if someone turns up and we all get along with them then sure we'll see how that goes but there's no agenda as such Okay, I see. Well, I have one more question. Are throuples all intimate with each other or does that really just depend on the throuple? I mean, that's the thing with polyamory, right? There is no set template because the whole idea is that you're not the whole idea is that it's not monogamy, right? So from there on you make your own rules. The only thing that is standard in all forms of non-monogamy is the transparency but uh, where each of these goes i don't think there is a standard i don't think there is a template i don't think there are standard rules that anyone follows it's just you sit and you make up your own rules and i think that's the beauty of it actually that uh, no two are alike even in the sense of the the rules that you make yeah and the boundaries that you have no i have uh, and i do not claim to have encountered very many different kinds of polyamorous or non monogamous relationships because it's fairly new when you know people are still just exploring it but no two have been alike right. every one has their own boundaries there are times i've met couples who are okay with having their uh, partners partner come over and then spending the night in a separate room I've met people who have a don't ask, don't tell policy. You know, so it ranges completely. So and and again, that's the beauty of it because you're you're assessing for yourself. Yeah. What you're okay with, what your partners are okay with, you're putting in that thought. You're there is that amount of self awareness that you're willing to think about it and then say yes, this is okay and yes, this is not okay, and then take it from there. I guess the word consent is major in a throuple or in a polyamorous relationship but guys especially tanisha you're newer to the polyamory than shweta so you tell me what's the best thing about being in a poly relationship uh in my case specifically it's that i've actually started taking up a lot more space um to myself oh. i think um when i was in um monogamous relationships in the past uh there was this idea right that you know when it's true love you spend all your time together you do everything together and i think that's how a lot of my previous relationships sort of panned out where um there was a lot of frustration and and just uh discontentment because we didn't have that balance between being separate individuals with our own ideas and boundaries and being a unit that sort of operated together mm. um but now with polyamory i think it's been easier for me to sort of be a little more fluid with my time and my boundaries and my preferences and say okay you know today i want to spend time with ashish and shweta and like make time for them and i have another partner so maybe i want to make some time for him as well mm. um or maybe today i spend time only with this one partner because it's long distance and i'm not sure when i'll see him next and and eventually very organically my brain says hey you know you've been you've spent a certain amount of time just you know making quality time with your partners what are you doing for yourself and very easily then i've been able to retreat into my own space and say okay you know now's my time to just draw or catch up on that book i was reading and it's okay because i am making sure that my time is being used evenly for all the people in my life including my friends who are scattered across the globe 
And I don't think I had that approach before um, polyamory because there was all this guilt every time I would try to take um, a step away from my monogamous partners back then. I know what you mean. I'm sure, Shweta, when you married Ashish, your family must have been like, ah, oh, great, you know, daughter's getting married, everything's good. So what did your family think when you told them that you are open to more relationships, even though you've been married for about a year? What is the reaction from your family and friends? I think, uh, so there are still family members that don't know, but the ones that do know and the friends and all, of course, they all know. Um, their first reaction when I told them way back when was, are you happy? Does this mean, are you just trying to do this because you want to hang on to a marriage that isn't working? Then there was, are you, are you sure this is going to work? Are you sure you're not walking into a disaster? Um, at least the family and friends are mostly just concerned with whether we're happy or not and whether um, everything is transparent or not and which they know that it is. So now those questions don't even come up. And uh, I mean, if you keep thinking about what other people think, then life would really, truly be a disaster. But my all our close family and friends have actually been really supportive. That's very good. We want our families to be on our side. Can you give us an example of what is a common misconception? Oh God, so many. <laughs> uh, like, like the one that I mentioned earlier that, you know, the, uh, it's a form of either that it's a form of cheating or that it's lesser than monogamy because the level of commitment involved. Right. Another one is lots of people think that those who want to be poly just want to do it because they're horny or just want lots of sex or that it's one big orgy that one really makes me get into it. <laughs> I mean, while that's an option and, you know, everyone can have an orgy. Um, that's not what being polyamorous is about. I mean, mostly we're doing, we're splitting house chores together. You know what I mean? And trying to figure out who's going to clean the dog's poop. So. <laughs> okay, so let's hear a few more facts about the poly community that our awesome research team has found. La, la, la. Love matters. Statistics for India don't exist. But a 2021 survey carried out in the USA found one out of nine people, or 10.7%, have engaged in polyamory at some point. Bangalore does have its own polyamory Facebook group, which has well over a thousand members. In 2017, the group said their members were more or less split evenly across sexual orientations. That's so cool that uh, Bangalore has a Facebook community. Um, guys, this online the way you meet like-minded people or are there apps or how does it work oh uh, i have seen a lot of people a lot of poly people now using apps like uh, hinge and bumble as well oh interesting yeah um do you know how big the polyamory community is in india do we have any estimates it would be hard to say because like you mentioned earlier each city has its own groups and they're not just limited to one so for example, you mentioned a Facebook group. I'm sure there are groups on Twitter and Insta as well. And um, I'm sure there are WhatsApp groups as well. And there would be overlapping. So I don't know if there is a correct way to assess exactly the number of people. But uh, I do know that all lots of cities have this. And I know that because people come and tell me. Not that I've encountered any on my own. But uh, yeah, you see it on Reddit and all as well. So it's increasing. The conversation is increasing. The number of people who actively want to try this is increasing, which is which is great. It must be huge. <laughs> yeah, considering yeah. how many people we have in India, it must be a really big community. So, what would you hope to see change in India when it comes to polyamory? Um. Well, actually, it would be. I would hope that one day it's recognized as family unit legally recognized i mean um tani and i were talking the other day and we realized that you know if one of us is in an accident or if something happens and we're in the hospital then um because of how the legal structure and the laws of this country are she wouldn't get it even if she knew what we would want and were incapacitated she would not have a say and that's really messed up because technically speaking she knows the most because you know we we spend our, all our time with her we live with her and to think that she may not be able to do that is actually really painful as a thought and that wouldn't happen if this was recognized as a family unit legally speaking so 
Hmm. So I, I think it's it's been recognized as a um, family in New York. I think it happened last last week or something. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I I I have very similar hopes for polyamory as well because I think um, a lot of people today still feel like maybe monogamy is not working for them, but it's the safest option to choose because that would mean a certain level of financial and legal security and escaping certain levels of you know social judgment or being um, isolated or uh, ostracized by families and their immediate communities. I'm not saying polyamory should be the default either. I think just choosing for yourself should be the default. Correct. And that's what I hope these conversations help. Like Shweta said, I think the starting process is by equalizing these relationships and making them all recognized in the eye of the law. And once that happens and there is no set um, relationship structure that is the default in the law, automatically then these conversations become easier and people will feel safer sort of choosing for themselves. Right. Wow, that was a really, really great episode, you guys. I feel like I've learned so much. And I really, really hope that uh, the community gets recognized in whichever way uh, is necessary and the community wishes for. Thank you so much for being on the show today and sharing your experience with us. This was, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Absolutely, my pleasure. It's been really eye-opening. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you have a question in matters of love, don't forget to write us at lovematters at dw.com. Your question might be featured in one of our upcoming shows. You've been listening to Love Matters from Indian Express and DW, Germany's international broadcaster podcast about relationship topics that matter to you and me. Join us for our next episode when I'll be talking to Rajat Mittal about what it is to be a man and rethinking masculinity. I'm Evelyn Sharma and I think love matters. Love.